Awesome. I'm so glad to have you. This is one of the reasons I do love social media and how we can get connected. Uh, we got connected through the Pop Sugar article that Chan Plant did talking about chronic conditions, uh, lung, COVID, autoimmune diseases, and how many of us our athleticism is challenged mm -hmm. and we are many of us are just ingrained to be an overcomer talk about what it's all been like for you and how you took that and became a coach yeah it's an interesting journey because now i see it uh as pretty segmented um so i i've always considered myself athletic you know i got into sports pretty young um and i was pretty much fine up until college which is when i was diagnosed with lupus mm -hmm. um and that's kind of that was also sort of the journey of doing distance running so prior to college you know everything is pretty fine um I'm doing like basketball and volleyball and dancing, um, all my favorite things. In college, I start to get into running because I'm an exercise science major and things are, are going fa fairly well too until like one day, you know, you just start feeling a little odd. Um, and as with a lot of people know with autoimmune diseases, like the journey to diagnosis is always just a, a journey. Mm -hmm. um, so going from being relatively okay one day to just like, having my joints ache or, or not being able to get out of bed without pain, all the, like, or even to walk around campus without like having the swell swelling in, like in my legs um, and all that stuff was um, very foreign to me as someone that always prided themselves in being active and working out and like making your own meals and all that stuff. So it sort of started to feel like a part of me was starting to get eaten up or was starting to be taken away in that sense. So about a year and a half, after I started feeling symptoms is when I was actually diagnosed and then everything completely stopped after that. So um, I had to do chemo, uh, find the right medications. Um, and I'm sort of just waiting for the doctor to, to, to clear me, right? Once I got that okay, I thought it would be best to get back to running because it was, it was free. <laughs> I didn't have to pay for a gym membership and all that stuff. Um, even though it was really, really hard to start back up, you know, it's like starting from square one almost when I had uh, had done a few 5k races and I was really starting to get into like the process of training um, in running. So starting back from square one, eventually building up my endurance again, um, having some setbacks here and there, some minor flare-ups with lupus. Um, but for the most part, I do enter remission, right? And I right. think like, okay, worse is behind me. Everything should be fine going forward. A decade passes by and, and it is mostly fine. You know, I'm doing marathons in this in this time period, doing ultras, all that stuff, really like testing myself, um, always sort of like riding the line between <laughs> what's going to be OK and what's going to like maybe give me some inflammation again. You know, you never you never really know. Right. Um, but I had been OK and in remission for so long that I thought, you know, like, again, the worst was behind me until about a couple of years ago when I started feeling those similar symptoms again, you know, like running once again became hard for me. And I had swelling when I went out to run my resting heart rate was always so high. And uh, I didn't notice at the time, but like the weight started creeping on too. Um, it was hard to tell whether that was, that was from reduced activity or just, you know, some other things going on. But it took me a good six months, I would say, to sort of, for it to hit me that like, oh yeah, this is, this is one of the bigger flare-ups, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, it was my first time since the diagnosis. So I didn't really know what to expect. I just remember being sort of like, panicked of it because this is in the time of COVID. I did have like COVID back to back, like in 2022 or, or around that time. So I'm just like, wow, like literally nothing else can happen to right. me or, or we don't know where this is going to go. Um, so sort of just having that sense of fragility again, you know, from you have the high of being okay, you get the diagnosis, you work your way back up. And then it's just like, oh, this is what they mean when it's unpredictable. Like you, yeah. everything can be going right. And all of a sudden it's, it's not. Yeah. yeah. So I'm in that trajectory of like building back up. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. feel like you've conquered it. And then when all of these new things are being thrown back at you, because they are new in a way, because you've changed, you've gotten older, you've adjusted pretty much everything in your life to mm -hmm. what you think is accommodating the, the disease and right. bam, you know? So what were some of the, like you said, it took a while to click oh, this is what it is. What was mm -hmm. that like emotionally for you? Ooh, I would say it's pretty draining. Definitely some depressive episodes or just being really, really sad. Mm -hmm. um, I think 
it, it happened at a time where there was a lot of life changes going on too. So it really sure. felt like things were overwhelming. Like I was starting to think about leaving the job I had at the time and wanting to make a career shift and um, new relationships happening. I'm just like, this is a lot <laughs> at once. Yeah. Um, even like, and with leaving that job came with like that insurance switch. So having a gap mm-hmm. in insurance. So then I had to once again, be approved wait for a rheumatologist, have some, like go to rheumatologists and like get big, get back on the medication. Cause eventually I did run out of certain things. And I was just like, we're in no man's land yeah, <laughs> at it's this just... point. Um, and of course I'm doing my labs like I normally do. And they're all saying like, yeah, like you need to watch your kidney. You need to watch your liver. Like mm-hmm. your white blood cell count is, is low. Um, so a lot, it's hard to cap to, uh, label it as trauma because in the moment it's just hard like you can only kind of see it as trauma like looking back yeah and you you know then you're able to sort of really assess like the impact it had on you and even even now it's just like I will look at any given day like here in this year and I'm just like wow like a year and a half ago like I don't even know if I would have been able to do any of this thing so there's gratitude in that sense that you've gotten over that hump again but being in it um you know, a decade apart in like a pretty much a brand new stage of your life is just, yeah, a lesson yeah. you just keep learning <laughs> over it is. and over. It's yeah. confusing. You're right. Mm-hmm. Cause you do have that gratitude for what you can do and what you've overcome, but then there's that frustration too of how much more can I take, you know? Right. And right. how do you take that and turn that into being a coach? Because sometimes it's hard to be a cheerleader for yourself, let alone someone else when you're in that state of, I don't even want to think about this today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I put myself in the shoes of who I like of, of me as a younger athlete. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really used to talk about having lupus a lot, like in those early days. Cause I didn't, I didn't know how no one else was talking about it. So I was just like, I don't want to be labeled as this sick person (laughs) all the time. Um, and and when I, when I scroll back on Instagram and I remember sort of those milestone moments, I guess you would say in those early days when I did complete a workout or when I did start to feel stronger, there were, there were positive responses to that, but I still didn't have the confidence to sort of speak of my own experience, um, more. So that combined with like what I know now, 10 years into running and a few years into coaching is that there really isn't like that intersection of endurance sports and autoimmune conditions, even mm-hmm. though there's plenty of autoimmune athletes out there, they could right. be like me where they don't talk about their conditions or maybe, um, you know, they, it's, they don't have as big flare ups and things like that, but either way, it's something that they are managing along with their athletic career. So it's just like, if I could be that person who, um, is meeting that person post diagnosis, maybe they had athletics in their past and now they're sort of like wondering how they can get back to training safely let's like that's that's the intersect that's where I want to meet them at you know or someone that has never been an athlete in their life but now they want to use um, athletics as a way to sort of manage their symptoms or improve their quality of life that's where I want to meet them too yeah I think that's great I I agree with you there you don't want that to be the only thing you talk about, but it's also important for people to know that it can be done. And there are mm-hmm. other people going through that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I feel like, especially with rheumatoid arthritis, with the impact on the joints, I know that every person has to be careful and find their way, mm-hmm. but I also want people to know that if you want to try it, you can try it and experiment. Mm-hmm. I feel like experimentation is one of the big things. How about you? Yeah, yeah I, w- I would definitely agree. You don't know until you try. And it's really about having the curiosity and the confidence to tweak things, right? Yes. Like it's not going to go, it might not go well off the bat. And you might, you're going to have to play around with different metrics and parameters until you find like what works best for you, like in that moment, like medication, you know, you're not going to, this yeah. one dose for one person is not going to be the same dose for another. Absolutely not. Um, let's see when, so when did you actually start your coaching in all of this with the running specifically? I started coaching. I was cert- my first certification was in 2021. Okay. And okay. like most new things, I was also afraid of how to announce such a transition. So I didn't really say anything until 2022. I sat on it for a good six months. Um, and then January 2022 came by and I was just threw an Instagram post up there. Um, got some positive positive responses too, but um, I didn't think it was something I could do full time yet, though that was my goal. 
Um, so I did like the nine to five thing and then the five to nine thing with yeah. like figuring out how to coach. And it's, it, that's the thing, like, they don't tell you, it's just like, yeah, the certification is great. But like, once you're in it and you are making the training plans and you're checking up on folks, that's what takes the most startup costs to, mm -hmm. to sort of get through. So, um, that was kind of what 2022 is about for me. It's just like being confident with saying that I am a coach and working with those handfuls at like a, the, my first handful of athletes that year, um, that were trusting me basically as a brand new coach in this field. Like, yes, my experience as a runner, um, gave me a lot of credit, but, um, once you're again in this new profession, I think you just, you kind of want to take yourself, um, to a higher level, and all that. So since then, I've been pretty much investing a lot more in like my own coaching education and even on the business side of things with being more prominent, like in that audio mean space and saying that, yes, you know, I'm a lupus athlete. And I also, um, as along with like just your regular road and uh, trail athletes, I do want to have that niche for audio mean athletes. I want to do either um, and just get them back up and running too. So have you already coached someone with autoimmune? Yes. Yeah. I've so done, what, a, uh, I have a few, I have a couple on my current roster and maybe one that may be returning also, but yeah, so we, we kind of see the same awesome. things. It's just like, I, I have had someone do, I have a flare up like so close to their race and we have to completely, yeah. you know, adjust yes. the plan and decide whether it's still safe to even do the race and all that stuff. And what does that look like for them? Um, and even someone that is a newer to working with me where we were trying one, um, metric or parameter for training first. And it was sort of working okay for her. And then we switched things up in these past couple of weeks. And she's just like having so much fun now, you know, it's like, she's, she's feeling like her, her pre um, autoimmune self. And that's like, that's basically what I want to see too. It's just like focusing on the fun of the sport, uh, just getting active and getting out the door. Um, so you're, you're not just like meeting with doctors or like sitting on your couch and, and what have you. Um, you're just finding ways to be in that space again, even if it looks different from what you were doing prior to diagnosis. Like now that's something that's very hard. And I'm sure mm -hmm. you've noticed and experienced that. And you were probably going, if you haven't already have to coach these athletes through those changes. And that is so hard when you've made progress or a milestone and mm -hmm. then you're set back and you can't get back there the same way you did before. What's mm -hmm. some of your advice on getting through those situations? Yes, I would say as hard as it might be, the first thing would be to just look, leave the past in the past. Um, there's, there's really no way to return to that exact level, but don't forget what you've learned like in that process. Cause I can definitely help you see things in a different light for the new journey that you're on. Right. It's just like, just because just if I'm not running the same pace I used to, doesn't mean like all, everything that I've learned that got me there isn't relevant now. Like the same kind of rules apply because it's, it's running, but set some new goals for yourself. Like I always, I, it was really hard for me to, to do the same thing, like not compare myself to who I was. So I'm just like, no, this is my current PR. This is me, uh, like me post flare PR. Like it's, it's, yeah. you can make it, you can label it as much as you want. And I think we kind of, you know, we get in a trap if we are comparing ourselves to others or who we used to be, but if it's your, it's a, it's your individual journey, right? You are the rule maker, you know, yeah. you don't have to be like, you don't have to uh, try and beat your old times and all that stuff, but set new goals for yourself, you know, make it, make a game out of it until you feel like you're ready to really like sort of push it again mm -hmm. um, and be okay with like being patient in that process too. You know, you didn't get to your old PR overnight. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not yeah. going to happen overnight in, in this uh, stage of your life too. That's good. That's good to know. I like that very much. So I will be telling myself that very much, very <laughs> often. Do you have a lot of clients? Do, do they just happen to come to you and realize that you work with autoimmune or are they seeking you out for that specific niche? Um, sometimes a bit of both. I would say my autoimmune athletes are definitely seeking me out for, because of that. Right. Um, because I do state that, um, I want to be that resource for them. And, uh, I've gotten more comfortable talking about my own journey, which helps too. So it's like, yeah. if you, if you follow me on Instagram, like I really don't try to sugarcoat anything. I, I, I will post when I have an appointment with rheumatology or when I did my last labs and because it, it, it all makes sense. Like you can't see me as just the runner without 
all the stuff that goes behind it because yeah. my uh, my day-to-day is going to look different from someone that doesn't have to do um, yes. as many steps <laughs> behind yes. the scenes. So it's important for them to to see that, to normalize it for autoimmune and not on, non-autoimmune alike, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that it's great knowing that your clients can, they're going to find understanding and compassion with you. You're going to understand what that's like to wake up thinking you go to bed feeling one way and wake up feeling another way. Mm-hmm. And you got to meet your coach and do the training and you can understand, oh, this is what's happening. Okay. We can adjust on the fly and you're going to mm-hmm. get that yeah. where not everybody might. So I mm-hmm. think that's a, that's a, that's, it's a, I call those twisted gifts. I think that's something that you are able to help someone through and help them make their goals. So that's great. Yeah. What are some of the other things you're hoping for yourself in say the next year or two? Yes. So I definitely feel like I am entering, um, like a very comfortable stage with running where I am, I'm just, I'm starting to feel stronger. My workouts are feeling really good. So it's like, I'm no longer afraid to set those big goals again versus good. like when I was in the flare up, I was very, very unsure of like what I could do. Could I do it at the level that I believe that I could achieve? So now uh, things are feeling a lot better. And I, I'm kind of back to kind of like my curious adventure self, I would say, where if something sounds fun, I'll put my, my, my name in it and just go for it versus like having to think twice about it and maybe think of like, oh, how long could this put me out? And, um, what's the recovery going to look like? And for those really intense stuff. Um, so that kind of lets me just have more fun in general. Like I train with a purpose, but I make sure that, it, it all relates back to something, right? And mm-hmm. I also, I've also had this thought recently about, um, so something that autoimmune, that I've learned through autoimmune is that like, sometimes the future isn't as clear as you would hope to be, hope it to be, because um, you never really know what the next year would look like. And I, I realized that um, that was what was causing most of my anxiety is that not mm-hmm. knowing. And so that can, that what that showed up like as for me is wanting to do everything at once. Mm -hmm. And so what I've learned through athletics is just like, you know, running has its rules too. It's just like, if I do too much, I will get injured, which just backfires on the autoimmune thing. So it's just like, if I want to have longevity in the sport, I need to take care of the autoimmune stuff and I need to be patient and not try to overload myself at the same time. So finding that sort of balance between wanting to live your best life, (laughs) but also wanting to live your healthiest and your strongest and your longest. Yeah. Yes. For sure. So you've got the fitness stuff mostly figured out. Mm-hmm. What do you do to relax and recharge? Ooh, I love watching television here yeah. and there. Um, we're usually watching a series of something. So um, when we're both done with work, it's like, you know, having dinner and then watching a show before bed. Um, playing with our cat is always super fun too. Um, hiking, checking out new restaurants and coffee shops and things like that, or just reading. I'm a big audiobook fan. And even mm-hmm. like, uh, I try to do some physical book reading before bed too. Um, and hanging out with folks, they mostly doing nothing. Like if I, some of my best moments are just like being a slouch on a friend's couch. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's good for us sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> what about, I feel like athletes for sure. And then when you have chronic conditions, you read stuff about anti-inflammatory diets and how to, you know, eat for your health. Mm-hmm. Have you rolled that into everything in your lifestyle? I think there was a lot of experimentation with that in the beginning, yeah. uh, particularly with diet, because I I had blood clots along with the diagnosis. Oh, so goodness. taking like Coumadin or Warfarin and the rules that came with that. Um, but that was also sort of like my first instance in standing up for myself because uh, it's like, you almost have to, you have to be your own advocate. And yes. some of the rules that they tell you kind of won't make sense to you. It's just like, wait, I'm not supposed to be eating leafy greens because of da, 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 da. I'm just like, so I'm, I still remember that appointment where I told them that like, you know, I want to, I need to eat for athleticism, not as an everyday person. Like that's the sort of like caveat that I've had to go into. Like even looking at my labs is just like, you're going to have to look at these as someone that is doing strenuous exercise. Yes pretty much daily. So the numbers are always going to look a little different. Um, So yeah, I definitely read the books on the anti-inflammation and all these things. And I will say that I, I tried vegetarianism or I was vegetarian for about six years. 
Mm-hmm. And then uh, short stint and veganism could not sustain it. <laughs> that was the other thing too. So now it's now my view on nutrition is it needs to be well rounded. I don't want to restrict many things. Um, if I have a craving for it, I'll go out and get it just to you know put an end to it. But I I know there's a limit on some very particular things like uh, salts and things like that. Um, for me, as like you know with the blood clots and blood pressure type of things, but I think, again, that's where athleticism, I feel, has also really helped me in that sense. It's just mm-hmm. like, if I am eating with a bigger goal in mind, aside from just like keeping the autoimmune at bay, yeah. then that opens up a whole new world for me of like different flavors and different foods and things like that, where I feel comfortable experimenting or not having to restrict as much. And again, taking it as an experiment, it's just like, I, I don't eat shrimp because I'm like, hey, I'm allergic. Like, that's the smart goal. If yeah. I ever eat something and I notice an immediate inflammatory reaction, that's yeah. like, that's what I feel like. That's the real inflammation diet. It's just like, you're, you're out enjoying your life and maybe you have an adverse effect versus like going in, like nitpicking sort of their food and being, being afraid of something will happen yeah. versus like living your life and just adjusting to the things that happen. Or having someone tell you, you are going to respond to this a certain way and you may not. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I love, and I want to drive the point home we have to be our own health advocate. The doctors are great. They're overwhelmed though. And if you don't speak up, you lose your chance. You've just got to. And if your doctor's not listening to you speak up, find a new one. Right. It's just very important. Um, You do have the power. (laughs) Yes, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. What else do you want to share with everyone? I love what you're doing. I think it's important that you are sharing and and what you are bringing to the fitness and autoimmune community. Let's see. Hmm. I, I would say first, I would encourage those that are autoimmune athletes to start sharing more about their journey because um, it's been wild, the response that has happened to me once I started being more vocal with it, like even doing stuff like this pop sugar article, it's just like, that's another avenue to normalize this conversation and to normalize this experience because it is happening to so many people um, that you wouldn't have known otherwise. So being, being comfortable with just kind of speaking up with your own journey, you don't have to have like a huge platform to do it, but even within your community, like ask anybody around you, like if they, if they've ever heard of an autoimmune disease, can they name one or two? And it's mm-hmm. like, answer might be most likely no. So even doing that little bit of education with those who are closest to us, I think will really help bridge the gap, that knowledge gap um, within uh, within folks. And then hopefully that leads to people being curious enough to like look at what's happening in in the, the science and the literature world behind it. Um, advocate for yourself, as we said, and don't be afraid to try new things. Like I always say that you know the diagnosis isn't the period in your sense it's like the comma it's everything that happens after that's like that's really gonna affect how your life goes it's just like the diagnosis wasn't it was an event but it wasn't everything it's what you decide to do after thank you so much tell people where they can go to connect with you if they are ready to start Absolutely. Uh, I, my website is coachbymire.com and you can find me on Instagram at Hey Coach Mire. All right. Thank you so much. Come back anytime. I'd love to hear more from you. Of course. I'd be happy to. Be sure you're following along at runradio.net.